live debate. IntelligenceSquared.com And the crowd rise to this. Great Britain has a world champion. It's the 27-year-old Scott Graham O'Brien. Well, he was always, uh, you know, kind of number one cycling hero who basically up his own back and very little support from anyone else produced these amazing performances. Watch the clock, he's coming up to the line now. Oh, that is an incredible time, the world record. Graham Aubrey is one of cycling's immortals. He revolutionised the sport twice and won four world titles on a homemade bike. Boardman has got no answer to the flying Scott as he returns to his original starting station. Look at the clock. 422.668. That is a new world. Thanks. I always get sweaty pants watching that again. And then sore legs. Um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Innovation is about attitude. It's about not accepting mediocrity. It's about not accepting what tradition has handed down to us. It's about not, uh, it's about wanting to reach for something more. If you know there's something more, a better way, we can't see it yet, but if you know you feel there's a better way, there's more, better, something out there, a better way, a completely new way, not a better way of doing something the same, but something completely new, then you search for it, but it's an attitude. Because most people are content to carry on with what the status quo is, how things are right now. So, I'll start with this first picture. 1986, I was sat in a bike shop. My bike shop, rain was pouring down, west coast of Scotland, nobody coming in, staring at my time trial bike without the handlebars turned down. And at the end of the day, the result was this. That is the innovation but there had to be a process first. That innovation didn't just happen. It's like innovation is not something that there's some gifted one in a thousand, one in a million people are lucky to have. Now and again, this light bulb comes on of inspiration. No, the first thing that happened here was I answered the question of what was the question. And no innovation can happen till then. The question was how fast can a human being on a bicycle travel in a straight line within the rules of the sport using the laws of physics and what constrains it? At the end of the day, the result was, hold on, the biggest limiting factor to you traveling in a straight line is aerodynamic resistance. And I thought, hold on, using Newton's basic laws of physics, I thought you can either increase the power output which I subsequently did. For the next seven years, I worked on training harder, eating better, innovating ways of, um, of breathing and, and uh, pedaling technique. But the number one priority right now in that bike shop was how can I reduce the resistance? And the answer was to them take the arms out of the equations effectively by taking them out of the windstream. I thought, turn the handlebars around. That was my innovation for the day, but that innovation wouldn't have happened if it wasn't the first step of answering what is the question, how can I go faster on a bicycle? So, that was the result of that. Then, those seven years passed, I rode like that. I, okay, improving the engine output, but fundamentally spent seven years in a comfort zone. And hindsight, because yeah, it was a comfort zone, I was going out, winning Scottish races, gravitated to the British level. Then I thought, hold on, that Bourbon chap that I'm kind of having ding-dongs with, he's doing so much better than me, and what can I do here? So I thought, well, I come on to a new process. A second process took place. A second process took place where I thought, not just answering the question, to ask myself again, how can I go faster? I've built this engine up. How can I go faster on a bicycle within the rules of the regulations of the sport, within the laws of physics? A second thing happened. I thought, and I realized that education, the knowledge I had, all the years of education, all the years of all the knowledge of cycling, everything I'd studied through books, all of that stifled innovation. I thought to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to know nothing today. 
And I got on that bike, and I thought I'm going to go nothing, as if it's the first time. Should have got some Madonna on there. Uh, the first time. You know, within five minutes, five minutes on that bike, I thought, my goodness, these pedals are too wide apart, and the bar across the top is right in the way of my knees. How did I not notice this in seven years? Because education blinded me. Education is a great thing, but when you set it aside, you leave room for insight. So, the result was Old Faithful, the otherwise known as a washing machine bike, because I used a bit of washing machine. That wasn't innovation. The innovation took place in I need this narrow bracket. That was the innovation. The rest of it was perspiration. It was how can I achieve this? That was logistics. That wasn't innovation. I went on, as, you, as we probably all know the story of, uh, of I won the world and got the hour record and then I rode about the place for a couple of years. Actually, in hindsight, perfectly able to admit in a comfort zone. Again, I thought I've arrived, won the worlds, riding around the place, great, doing it, brilliant, fantastic. Then the authorities, in their wisdom, I, and thankfully they did, in fact, in hindsight, because I was in my comfort zone, I was quite happy, I wasn't moving out of that until they banned me. <laughs> Sorry, game, can't really like that anymore, bye. I, so, then, at that point, I went away, got a bit depressed and thought, hold on, oh, it's all useless, and then, then I came back and hold on, reach a, sometimes in life you reach a crossroad and you go, you know what, let's think here, let's really think. I thought, how can I go faster, as fast or as good, how can I maximise my potential on a bicycle? The rules were, I couldn't ride like that anymore. The rules were that I had to use clip-on tri bars. Is everybody familiar with tri bars, clip-on tri bars? Your elbows have to rest. You've seen cycling with the, the really fancy bikes with your arms tucked in. Your arms tucked in on elbow rests. Uh, so you're really aero tucked in and your elbows resting on elbow rests. That's triathlon bars and then really aero, modern aero position. So I had to ride like that, not with my arms tucked up. Now I'd never ridden like that, not in the entire time. So I thought, right, okay, I have to use these triathlon bars. So I asked the question, well, how was the fastest I can go on the bike? And I thought, right, okay, let's rid my mind of all the knowledge I have already and all preconceptions of these triathlon bars and riding positions, because what all I've seen is other riders like Chris Borman used in that position. And I did another thing. I thought, at that point, I thought, okay, everything has limitations. Everything goes in a spectrum, no matter what it is, there's a spectrum. There's an absolute maximum, a minimum, and everything and end of a spectrum. Now, what I saw in Bowman is one end of a spectrum, which was your arms were as tucked, sorry, I have no picture of Chris here, but his arms were as tucked in, every rider's arms were as tucked in, as close to the knees as they could be. And I thought, hold on, logically, what is the other end of the spectrum? Because I thought, if I, can, if I can reach the very, very, very far end of the spectrum of what is possible, then I've put a net around everything that's possible, and somewhere in between, there is an answer. But I'll start from each end until in a pincer movement, I will find the truth of what the best thing is for me. So I thought, right, okay, what is, by logic, it seemed ridiculous at the time, to, even to me, it seemed ridiculous to do that. <laughs> it seemed ridiculous, I thought, stick your arms way out in front of you like that. It's like, but logic says that is the maximum of the possibility of that bicycle setup. So... Felt obliged, go and do it, mess about the garage, rode about like that, thought, wow, that's amazing, I'm going to ride like that. <laughs> and that was the net result of it. I obviously went on to, uh, got the, they, they won the worlds like that again. And that was actually widely copied, I, I think, at the Olympics. I, so I, th I thought the Olympics was a complete disaster when, in fact, my innovation was used by seven nations and there were seven gold medals and I thought, you know, that was a complete washout. No, it wasn't. It was quite successful in terms of influence. But in terms of, of innovation, what you can do to innovate things was the thought process. That only happened, that didn't go, da ding oh, let's stick your arms out. It was a thought process, a logic process took place first. 
He had to empty my mind first. But you've got to remember, here's the point. A thought is a thing, right? Nothing starts without a thought, right? If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I couldn't do that, of course you can, right? Because, in fact, I've got a plan for every one of you, right? If you want to do innovation, right, and open your mind, here's a plan, right, tonight, here's the plan. What you do is this. You empty your complete knowledge of where you stay, right? Wherever you stay, empty that knowledge of it. Like, I rode that first bike for the first time in my life, right? You, when you come to your front door, you empty all your knowledge. You come to a stranger's house, you've never been there before in your whole life. You walk in the door and go, oh my goodness, that wallpaper's bogging. How did I not know that? How did I not notice that in seven years? So, there's an opportunity for everybody to do this. The truth of the matter is that if you can clear your mind of what your expectation is, of what you accept is absolutely everything that you can do. If you can ask yourself, whatever it is you think, there's a better way of doing this. If you can find out what the question is, if you can answer the question of what is the question, and then if you can clear your mind of everything that constrains you from finding an answer to that question, your knowledge, your education. Education is a great thing. But part of your mind has to know no education. And then a wisdom can come into you, an enlightenment, that they can then allow you to answer that question. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your, your indulgence. <laughs>